Hi, everyone. It's the Bill and Wendy show with Jonathan Davis <laughs> and Bill Fairman. <laughs> Wendy is not going to be able to make it with us today. She's off with more stuff on her plate. We talk about that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy has a lot of talents. So I want to start off with, if you're an accredited investor and you are thinking about getting into the alternative investing space, you can go to our website, carolinahardmoney.com, go to the investor tab, click it on, and then there's a form there that you can fill out to basically prove that you're an accredited investor, and then you can schedule a time to talk with us about specifically the recent fall in the stock market. That's what yeah. our talk is going to be about today, mm -hmm. is what's going on and how that's going to affect our business specifically. Now, I want to start off by saying last year we had changed our business model specifically for worst case scenario. We wanted yeah. to be as vanilla as we could be, right? Aren't you glad we're not holding on to a lot of uh, developments right now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so for those who aren't in our fund, we are specifically targeting affordable housing. That's in multifamily as well as single family. Mm, yes. We wanted to get our loan amounts down to $150,000 a piece, essentially, our average loan size. That's on the single family side of things. And we accomplished that in 2019. Our average was 158. Yes. Now, as a lender, it's more work. But, you know, as a lender, I'd rather have five $100,000 loans than one $500,000. Yeah, I mean, j just as much as you want you know, variance in, in what you do in a, spur, a, a certain asset class. You also want it in geography. You, you want diversification everywhere sure. across the board. And it's hard to have diversification if you're doing four loans a year. Yeah. It, it's, again, it's a, it's a lot less work to do the bigger loan amounts. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, your percentage of each loan is too high. And if you have one of the $100,000 loans go south, mm -hmm. you still have four making up for it. Yeah. And it doesn't mean you're losing money with the one that's going under, but you're certainly not getting an income on it until you figure out the disposition. Yeah. Uh, with the $500,000 loan, all that 500 is kind of stagnant till we figure out the disposition and get that money working again, right? Yeah, yeah. In, in the scenario of diversification, you just make less money. In the scenario of not diversification, you lose money, you lose opportunity. Right. There's a lot more potential losses. And I keep saying this all the time. I just keep beating that dead horse. <laughs> In any economy, you have to have two things, food and shelter. <laughs> and affordable housing is, is the way to go. Affordable I, would, housing, I would argue there's three things. What, what's the third? Alcohol. <laughs> Those sales never go down. <laughs> well, this is true. <laughs> And don't use it as a disinfectant. <laughs> Remember, you need 60% alcohol content, according to the CDC. And what was it? Tito's vodka only has 40%. 40. <laughs> yeah, drink it. They, oh. it, is, it is really funny how they injected themselves in the corona situation by uh, tweeting out that don't use our vodka to clean your hands. <laughs> it's not yeah, going to work. Drink it instead. Yeah. So that said, how do you think what's going on now is going to impact us? I mean, I think there's several ways that it, it can impact us. I mean, directly and indirectly. I mean, you, you already see, and I guess to clarify what we're talking about, what's going on, the yeah. coronavirus. And, and the stock market is and the, dropping like a rock. And the stock. This morning, and of course, we're trying to, do, we're not going to be doing this real time because we're not live streaming this, but this morning on the way in, the Dow was at like 22. And yeah. there was already a 1200 points futures drop from the 20s. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, so, when you're talking, that money has to go somewhere, right? People are selling. What are they doing? with it? Yeah. They're selling. I mean, you, you take your, lo your losses, but now you got to do something. Mm -hmm. So you, you hear a lot of uh, chatter about people wanting to move that money into alternative assets, alternative investing, sure. uh, which is, which is a great thing. 
from our perspective, what makes it appealing, I think, is it's going to infuse current fund models and it's going to spark new fund creations. Sure. Like that's, I mean, the fund model, I think, is going to explode. I mean, it, it's already been exploding for the last few years, but it's going to continue to explode. We're going to have a lot more private money in the space, which then asks the question, if you're pushing more of that in, what's being pushed out? And given the short-term risks that are associated with what's going on right now, I wonder what's going to happen with institutional capital. Are they going to back off their bullish approach to the short-term investing? Sure. Or what's going to happen there? It's hard to say. I think they're going to generally pull back from the little more risky. Why we call it risky is because we're talking about long-term projects, right? Well, yeah. Stuff where the markets can change and you can't do anything about them. Or assets that require speculation, like right. land. Yeah. Yeah. Horizontal mm -hmm. buildups. <laughs> that there's a, a long period from the time you start the project till you finish the project mm -hmm. and all kinds of things can, can change in there. Long term, you don't want to really be locked into any kind of long term contracts, right? Yeah. Unless on the receiving end of higher returns. So let, let's it's say, just it's risk adjusted returns. You yeah. have to make sure that it's all risk adjusted. What the here, here's what's happening in the treasury bond market too. You have people that are going into cash, so they're they're selling their stocks. Mm -hmm. If they go into treasuries, I mean the yield this morning was 0.6 some odd percent. Oof. Ten year, ten year treasury. That's tempting. So there's ten, you're locking your money up for ten years. Yeah. To make less than a percent. Which given short term issues that are happening right now, you will have people who want to seek that long-term safety. But that's, that's 10 years. That's, that's <laughs> 10 years, yes. Now, I imagine that it's fewer, to me, I think it's fewer U.S. people mm. are putting money in the treasury. And I think it's more European money going in the treasuries because their central banks are negative interest rate. Mm -hmm. So why would you put your money into something that you're basically paying them to store it? Yeah. Or you could put it in U.S. treasuries and at least make something. Yeah. And, you know, we are the flight to safety from all over the world. And so I think a lot of that is being pushed by foreign investment coming in because they can't, th there is no safety where they are. Yeah. That said, interest rates are going down because that's that's the way it works. When the yields go down, you know, the interest rates kind of follow suit. The mm -hmm. the thirty-year mortgage rate is keyed off of the ten-year treasury. So we're having a huge refi boom. Yes, going on right now in the short term for our business. Yeah, our appraisals are going to take longer. I mean, third-party vendors <laughs> are sure. Thir you know, you're going to your appraisals. Uh, insurance quotes. I mean, all those things yep. that are that are in flux with your third party vendors yep. are going to take a lot longer. Absolutely. The one thing I want to caution all you mortgage people out there though, your realtors are your bread and butter. Just because you have this refi boom, don't forget about your realtors because your realtors are your long term projects. Mm -hmm. The refis are short term. They're always going to be up and down. <laughs> And if you refi too many people at 3%, I doubt the rates are going to be lower anytime soon. Here's another thing that might happen too. People may keep their homes longer because they can't get a better rate. Oh yeah, for sure. And, and it's a psychological thing too. You know, home, home prices will adjust as rates go down. Home prices will actually start to rise a little bit mm -hmm. because now it's more affordable. Yeah. That said, from our perspective and in our business, I'm not really concerned with people not buying homes or yeah. people renting homes because we're in both sides of it. Mm -hmm. We we make loans for people that are fixing up properties either to sell mm -hmm. or to rent out, and they're all in the affordable housing market, right? Correct. So if you're in an industry that is slowing down, you know, travel industry or shipping. Because let's face it, you've had these shutdowns in China. Yeah. And 
inventory is low, so less stuff is available. So there are going to be certain industries that are going to have layoffs in it, and they're not buying. They're going to be refinancing before they get their pink slip. <laughs> But we still have inventory shortages. We have way more households than we have yeah. uh, houses. So I, I still think supply and demand are going to be in uh, pretty even shape. A actually, you know, supply is going to be less than demand. So I don't, I don't see that shaking. I do yeah. see that the luxury market is going to yeah, start that, flattening out. For it, sure. I mean, it already has in some markets. Exactly. We've already experienced it in, in Charlotte a little bit as well. So, yeah. So we get, you know, all the, I don't even want to use the negative, but all the things that are happening that are maybe less positive than we'd like them to be. Where are the opportunities right now mm -hmm. for not only just for funds like ours, but also for individual investors? Where, where are those, where do those opportunities lie in a climate like this? Well, it, they, they certainly aren't in the stock market right now. <laughs> sure. uh, that being said, the conventional wisdom says that, you know, we've lost 20% from the most recent highs yeah. in the stock market. So stocks are at a bargain, right? When everyone else is selling. The, the problem is when you, when you reach a certain age or you have a certain part of your retirement portfolio, mm -hmm. you want to put it towards you know, the least risk possible. And when you get to a certain age, you want to start cutting back from the volatility of the stock market and go into something that's not going to have that kind of volatility. That's why a lot of people will buy uh, rental homes to turnkey rental homes. Mm -hmm. They'll get into funds that own property or they'll get into funds like ours that, that make loans that are yeah. really debt funds Yeah, because there's less volatility in those areas and you can still grow in them. Yeah, Most of them will continue to allow growth mm -hmm. and then be able to turn that switch and start getting income from them uh, when you're ready to receive income from them. If you're in the heavy in the stock market, you're, you know, five years from retirement and you've just lost 20% of your portfolio. Yeah. And now you're thinking, well, it might be seven to 10 years before I retire now because I was almost there and now I've lost this and now I got to make it back up again really bolsters well for the stock market retirement plan. And I'm not saying real estate is for everyone, but it is, in my opinion, it's, it's much more, I call it steady Eddie. It's much more conservative. Most people don't feel that way because they don't, most people speculate in the real estate business, in the real estate space. Mm. They don't, they don't look for cash flow. They're looking for uh, appreciation. Okay. Yeah. And they're looking for appreciation in, in funds. They're looking for appreciation in properties. Most real estate investments are cash flow. It's not about appreciation. If you get appreciation, icing on the cake. Yeah. <laughs> now, those are for funds that own property. Mm -hmm. And that said, you can force appreciation on a property. Once you've got stabilized and you forced your appreciation it's not going anywhere else not very quickly <laughs> yeah it's all going to be about the cash flow mm -hmm. and that's what you want if you're not chasing high yields you just want to you want your money to make money yeah right yeah exactly and in the real estate space your money is backed by actual solid assets mm -hmm. the stock market is based on the ability for a business to make a profit. Which we know most of them aren't. Yeah. Or not most. That's that's a well that's not correct. 30 30 percent to 40 percent. There are not. The, the solid stocks are the ones that are we call them large cap. Mm -hmm. So they these are the they have large capitalizations and I don't have it broken down right in front of me, but the large cap stocks are the ones going to have the least appreciation. Yeah. or growth in their value. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are, take a lot to get into because their prices are pretty high. Yeah. Uh, but they're always also going to be the least affected in a downturn. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, you're not getting much of a return on the equity side. Now, if you're going to get into a large cap stock, get one that pays dividends. Okay. So 
you're going to get some appreciation, not much, but at least you can get some income on it. And they, they have plenty of money they can weather most storms. True. Again, you're just not going to get much improvement in the in the price. Yeah. Uh, over the long haul, uh, your your small cap stocks are going to be the ones that uh, are the most volatile. They have the most upside, but most of them aren't making a profit yet. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the companies that came on this year with their IPOs, mm -hmm. they're losing money. They're just doing it based on transactions and their possible upside. Well, you know, the, the statistic is that a little over 30% of all current companies that are publicly traded, their income does not outpace their interest payments. Not any, th not any other expense, just their interest payments. Wow. And when you think about it, that's a, that's a scary number. Yeah. Most people aren't going to have their retirement invested yeah. in those types of companies anyway. That, that's for your, we'll call it, Las Vegas money, <laughs> casino money, right? Yeah. That's for your, your play money. Well, and like the, the op when I think of the opportunities right now, I think of, I can't help but think of, you know, for, for us and in, in, in the fund model and, and for our investors, that opportunity lies with everyone panicking and right. stopping production of loans or loan sales because they don't know what's going to happen. So they want to hold on to what they have. Right now is an opportunity to sell loans at a premium. Sure. So if, if you are holding on to loans and you were thinking about selling them, now might be a good time to do so. Yeah. Or hang on to them. Or hang on. <laughs> I mean, there's an argument for both sides. Yeah. You can get a premium for it, but you know, then it's that, but that's then your money's not working again. Then you're then now you have to get your money working. Yeah. Yeah. So in short, which is not because we've been rambling. <laughs> <laughs> when you're in the real estate space, and especially with, with what we did with changing our model. We made our model to where it's worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. We're staying in the affordable housing side because what, what's the worst case scenario in a lending fund? You have to foreclose on a piece of piece of property. Yeah. And then they file bankruptcy, but yeah. <laughs> e either way. Yeah. yeah if yeah. you end up owning them yeah. as a lender mm -hmm. and again, worst case scenario, you can't sell them. Mm -hmm then at least you can rent them out for what your expected return is. Yeah, or very close to it. I mean, yes, you're, you you're can't, right. You can't do that with a luxury home. You just you can't, can't, you can't, can't do get it with rent for them. You can't do it with a luxury home. You can't do it with land. You can't do it with a right. half-constructed property. You, you know, it's... Right. So and from our perspective, we're, we're sticking with our bread and butter. Mm -hmm. It's going to be existing properties. Yes. And what I mean by properties, existing structures yep. It'll, yeah. that aren't going to take a ton of work to finish them up. Yeah. Fixed to uh, fixed rent, fixed, you know, fixed flip. Right. But all in that price point. And then anywhere from what we call this C plus class multifamily properties up to the, the B plus yeah. class. Yeah. The, and, you know, we do what's called participations in those. So we're not lending on the entire thing. We have other funds that come in and we all, we share the risk just mm -hmm. like we do when we want our lower loan amounts and our single family, we're sharing the risk with other funds with the, the larger stuff too. Uh, but they're all going to be properties that can easily be rented out quickly if we end up having to take them back. Yeah. And this is not the time to speculate on, not even speculate, but if, if you're trying to buy up land for subdivisions, no. Maybe give it a, a few months or, <laughs> or so. Just see. Uh, again, know. it's not, you're not never going to do it, but you want to see what's yeah. happening. The, the unknown is what, what's going on and you want to stick with your, your bread and butter. So mm -hmm. uh, we've bored you enough with uh, the, the Wall Street. And I, I like to call it the antelope herd. <laughs> if you ever watch somebody flying over a herd of antelopes in a helicopter, mm -hmm. one of them takes a shot off this way and they all follow it, right? Oh, yeah. That, that's kind of what's happening right now. Everybody's panicking. Well, that's the psychology of, of most of most humans is, you know, follow the herd. And if everyone panics and sells low or sells high, you know, they're just following suit. So it's... And, and again, keep in mind, this is also an opportunity. A lot of the borrowers we deal with, they have cash set aside just for this. Mm -hmm. So if prices do drop, people have to sell because they were over leveraged. 
then they're going to be able to buy it at a discount. Yep. Um, again, are they going to use all their money to do that? No, they're going to leverage someone else's to buy those assets at That's a lower right. price. That's right. So sometimes it's good to see a little, little bump, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. If you want to find out more about our fund, go to carolinahardmoney.com, go to the investor tab and fill out the form and we'll uh, give you, actually we'll set you up as a, uh, on a schedule to have a talk. Okay. Did you want Don't them to like us or? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Please like us. Yeah. <laughs> Please. I like you. So yeah, don't forget to share, to subscribe, to like, to do the thumbs up, all that, all that kind of stuff. And I uh, hope to talk to you soon. Hi, if you really like this show, what you can do is you can check out some of our other shows that might or might not pertain to it. You can check up there. You can check over here. You can check down here check it out. Don't be afraid to like us, right? Subscribe. <laughs> do that too. Subscribe to our page and hit like. We'd love to have you do that. Thanks.